Today's text, I am the word, a guide to the consciousness of man's self in a transitioning time, a study guide by Paul Selig. So this book, uh, this book is a recorded transcript that took place between February 26, 2009 and March 14, 2009 between Paul Selig, who served as the channel and Victoria Nelson, who was present via telephone from Berkeley, California. Um, this is the vehicle to serve as the awakening, you know, it's how we can restructure ourselves so we can align with the Christ frequency with our higher selves. Um, you know, when you look at it, um, everything vibrates, everything is in frequency. And when you hold a certain vibration, that is the frequency that you align to right now, because everything is in vibration, you attract what you align to, right? And a large part of this book is helping us align to the Christ frequency, helping us become one with that, helping us tap into our inner vibration so that we can call in the things of the higher self. And when one becomes aligned with this, like Paul Selig describes it, the, the Christ frequency, you begin to move towards a life that has more harmony and more flow. You start to rediscover who you are. And when one raises their level of consciousness to this frequency, they begin to understand themselves more outside of social constructs that have limited them or that kept them apart from their true selves, you know, for the longest time. You know, even for myself, I was disconnected from who I truly was because I was looking at the outside world to bring me happiness, you know. And as you read this book and as you go through each chapter, each chapter is going to provide you with insights as to how you can increase your awareness and your consciousness. And then by doing so, your vibrational frequency will begin to shift. And with that, there comes a lightness. You know, for me, as I started to raise my vibration in align with the frequency of the higher self, the Christ itself, there was a lightness that came over me. You know, I also began to understand a lot of the shifts that were happening in my life by going through this text, right? You know, a lot of the transformation that was happening in my life at the time, I couldn't necessarily articulate it and put it into words because I wasn't familiar with a lot of the things that were happening. And then I stumbled across the book of Paul Selig and I wasn't familiar with this author when I came across his book or when his book came into to my ecosystem. But as I started to read the book, it really started to help me understand kind of what I was going through as well. It allowed me to understand how I can really utilize the resources to tap into my higher self, how I can start to shed the old skin so I can really align with what I was trying to be and what my spirit was asking of me to be. You know, so as you go through this book, you'll notice um, different things that are going to help you understand where you are and how you can continue down that path. And if you're at the infancy of your journey, at least you'll be able to put things into words and it will explain what's happening as you move towards the Christ itself, the higher self, and how you can leave behind old patterns and old thoughts and limited beliefs and ways of doing things that are not serving you. You know, the path to enlightenment or like evolution is is so unique and it's, it's unique to every one of us. It's very individual. And the one thing I grasp from this journey is that it's okay to be wherever you are during this journey because where you are has its lessons and its growth and it's constantly guiding you towards your higher self the christ itself you know for many of us this journey can be difficult you know imagine living your life thinking that you know you are a certain person and then someone comes across to you one day and tells you that actually you know what the person that you've always thought you were you're not that person you're actually this person this is your true identity you know going through this process is such a departure from what you know. And it can be difficult to release the grip that you have on the old self because you've been doing things within the body of the old self, within the mindset and the consciousness of the old self for so long. You know, so the challenge is, you know, we have to get to a place where we can release the old self and align with the higher self, the Christ itself. You know, we've been taught to view life through the lens of, the five senses. We've been taught that through the five senses, that true power comes from what you obtain. True power comes from what you get. You know, we give meaning to external things and we say that this is true power and this is how you achieve happiness. So some of us, we go through our entire lives trying to change happiness 
through obtaining things in the material world, you know, but the issue is many of us, we follow this formula for success because this is what we've been told to follow. And we've been constantly reaching outside of ourselves and we fail to look within. And then we realize we get to a point that despite the amount of success that we achieve, we still feel this inner turmoil inside. You know, we feel these pressure coming up that we've been suppressing and we keep pushing this pressure back down and we're wearing this mask and we're doing work that's masquerading as busy work and we're getting more material things. But we realize at the end of the day that these material things that we're getting, it's a band-aid solution to how we truly feel. The disconnect, the turmoil that we feel is from neglecting our true selves, suppressing our true feelings. So as we go through this book, we really begin to put the attention back on what truly matters, put the attention back on ourselves, remove the fixation of the external world and align with our internal, internal selves. Because when we align with our internal selves, this is when one experiences true happiness. Now, what it means to be the Christ is to be in the frequency of Christ and to recognize the self in its divinity as one with the creator without the separation of the self that the ego process would keep in place to diminish the glory of the self as one with the creator. Now, once you understand that the Christ is in essence, the vibration of God as realized as a man and that it can be recognized and awakened and made manifest, you will begin to believe that everything is possible in this world. But you must understand the possibility of this begins with you. You are the safety of this action. You are the one who chooses it. You are the one who allows it forward. You're the one who believes it can be true. We start to align with the Christ frequency when we start to see ourselves as being one with the creator. Once you understand this, you can awaken within yourself the vibrational frequency that allows you to manifest all of your true desires. You know, for most of us, they don't believe that they can choose it or they don't believe it is possible. You know, they don't believe it to be true. So they look outside themselves for happiness. But you must understand that the possibility of this begins with you to the extent that you align with this energy we deem as the christ self is the extent in which it becomes aligned with your self-glory and once this has transpired your frequency has adjusted itself to the high vibration therefore part of shifting your vibration is having trust and belief in what you cannot detect through your five senses therefore for one to evolve one must see beyond what is physically in front of them and tap into a knowingness which is an attribute of the multi-sensory human. When you take time to know yourself, you start to notice the signs, symbols, and synchronicities that are all pulling you and guiding you. When you notice this, you begin to realize that you have experiences that extend beyond the five senses. And when you create space for them to come in, you're tapping into your knowingness. Now, it's, this is not an easy path. It's not easy because it moves things. And when you unleash a cave by rolling the boulder that has blocked its entrance, its face and everything that has been sealed within comes out screaming as it has been exposed to the light. That is the process you've undertaken. You know, when you embark on this journey, you're going to shed light on the boulder in the caves of your life. You know, the boulders that we carry are the things that are not in alignment with our higher self. You know, the career that's not in alignment with us, but we've stayed in. The job that's not in alignment with our beliefs or the relationship that's not right for us. You know, these limitations have other limitations attached to them and they've been laying there dormant for as long as we know. But when you start to do the work and you align within and you claim yourself as the Christ itself and you start to align with your higher self, Things start to move. Your limited beliefs, doubts, fears, and limitations starts to shift. These boulders start to unravel, and the truth starts to reveal itself. And like the saying goes, you unleash a cave by rolling the boulder that has blocked the entrance, and everything that has been sealed within comes out screaming as it's ex exposed to the light. This is the process of transformation. And as you venture down the path of awakening and raising your conscious awareness, you start to attract the resources that are going to help you raise your vibration. They're going to start to expose your boulders to the light, and they're going to start to remove the things that have been weighing you down. There is a knowingness that starts to come over you that wasn't there before as you begin to embark on this journey. And as you continue down this journey, you clear the cave of all the things that were holding you down, that were limiting you, and that were making you small. 
you know, what people know when they finish this book will be different than when they pick it up off the shelf. However, we don't speak of knowing on an informational level. We speak of knowing the truth. I know what I know what I know. We don't brainwash. We don't infiltrate. We don't create openings for others. How would it feel finally to know I know myself? I know my worth. I know my love. I know my body. I know my path. I know I am deeply loved by the creator. You know, when we don't know, we look outside of ourselves for power. And in all fairness, for the longest time, a lot of us, we didn't know, right? And it's not something to feel guilt or shame over, but a lot of us have grown up thinking that true power sits outside of our being. Therefore, we put our energy on the outside world and we neglect the true authentic power that lies within. And since energy flows where your attention goes, it's about shifting your attention back onto us. And by shifting the energy back onto us, we begin to truly know ourselves. You know, the process of going inwards is about being reacquainted with the self, befriending oneself. And as we do this, we start to know thyself. We start to love thyself. We start to trust ourselves, And then we start to know our path. And this is the feeling of knowingness that Paul refers to in the book, right? When you have this knowingness, you know that you are aligned with the Christ itself. And when you know this, you hold the frequency that's very different because you're tapping into your knowingness. And by doing so, you're raising your vibration and your conscious awareness because now you know, wait, we know that we're aligned with the creator and this is the truth and this is our truth. And as we do this, we start to see past structures that have been created to keep us small. We start to dismantle them because we're stepping into our knowingness. We're stepping to our authentic self. You know, if you believe that the structures that you have created to give yourself worth or prestige or the feeling of safety or belief in your abilities to do certain things, if you believe that all these are permanent structures, you'll be shocked when suddenly you are unable to write anymore or suddenly when you have a new desire or suddenly when the prestige that you acquire to give you praise in external ways vanishes, then what do you have? You know, everything in life is transitional. All things are in transit. They're in constant movement. And they're in constant change. Structures change. People change. Things come and they go. Therefore, if we rely on structures to give us self-worth and validation, we will be shocked when suddenly the prestige that you require to give you praise in the external world vanishes. You know, you'll not only have a hard time adapting to change, but if you've been looking for stability and happiness in structures outside of yourself, You'll constantly look to people, places, title, jobs, and other things to create that happiness that you seek. You know, it's about understanding that the structures are here to create order and control. That is the main use of these structures. It's not about being used by them, but it's understand how to use them to our benefit as well. It's about seeing them for what they are but not attaching yourself to them or depending on them for happiness. It's about understanding that, you know, what we create in this world is a reflection of our consciousness pointed outward, right? It's a reflection of who we are, but it's not what we are. However, people get caught up in trying to define themselves through external forms, external structures. And as a result, they end up experiencing more friction, heartache, stress, overwhelm, and burnout because we're attaching ourselves to the outside structures and we're, and we're, And we're defining ourselves by these things. You know, when you dismantle these structures, you begin to see where true importance lies. When the veil falls away, what is revealed finally is truth. And when the truth is revealed, the recognition of it comes quickly. And you begin to understand the process of experiencing this book, that what you are is the Christ embodying himself as man. This is the job, that is the teaching, and that is why you have come to this reading. And this is the experience of yourself as Christ. You know, everything that you've been told to pull you away from your Christ identity is a lie. And this book shows you the truth and shows you that you have the ability to align with the Christ vibration and your higher self. You know, the understanding of the Christ self as the Christ brings to it Christ. And once the Christ is merged with the soul that is created in, miracles occur. You know, when you align with the higher self, you attract what is in alignment with the frequency of the higher self. And you start to bring forth your vision of the soul. And as you do this, you notice that people, places, and circumstances that are aligned with your frequency 
will start to come into your ecosystem, start to come into your reality, and will start to align and start to resonate with where you are in life. Is as man or soul, you are part of the whole, which is the Christ vibration. And when you understand that you are part of the whole made in Christ, you understand that, you know, you are one of the same. And this is what the book is revealing to you. You know, you have been kept from your identity for so long. You've been taught that the outer world is where you possess true happiness. But when you start to look within, you can see that you're part of something greater. And as you begin to look within, you get closer to your higher self. As you raise your frequency and the vibration of your Christ itself within, the Christ itself starts to get closer to you. And then you start to see signs, symbols, and synchronicities that are guiding you and putting you on the course of your purpose and of your higher self, moving you towards what is truly meant for you and pulling you away from the limited beliefs, doubts, and fears that have kept you small and kept you in the dark or kept you in the cave for so long. You know, we speak now about what it means to become the Christ in frequency. It means that you align to a frequency, a vibratory frequency that is higher than the physical realm and that is higher than the emotional realm and that is higher than the mental planes. This is a high frequency. It is the casual frequency and the frequency that it emits is one of higher frequency that brings to the Christ. You become that which you intend and you cannot be that which you are not. You know, aligning with the Christ frequency goes well beyond the physical, mental, and emotional realms. It's remembering that God is the frequency of all cells in your being. And you are in vibration and you are an aspect of the creator in form. So when you resonate at this frequency, you bring those things into the same frequency that align with the Christ consciousness, right? You're constantly calling in energies to yourself that shift your being. And this is how you start to exist on a higher frequency, right? So as the saying goes, you attract that what you are, not what you want. You know, if your intention is to put yourself in a higher frequency, in a higher vibration, and to align with the Christ itself, this is when you start to emit energy and you start to pull in other energies that are like energies, like attracts like. But if we do not work on ourselves, but we say we want certain things, we have to understand that there's a huge disconnect there as everything is in constantly in vibration. Therefore, it's our vibration, it's our energy, it's our frequency that really determines our experience that we have in our life. That's why it's important to look at your limited beliefs, doubts, and fears that are holding you back as they clo as they carry a low vibration. You know, the choices that we make through fear have repercussions. Therefore, the ultimate goal for all men is to move from a place of fear to one of love and courage that carry higher vibrations, you know, evolving to a place where you have Christ manifest itself in man requires man to remove the fears, doubts, limited beliefs, indecisions that have kept him small and disempowered. And this is not a hasty process, right? The process of really understanding this is one that requires time. You don't grow from infancy into adulthood overnight, nor do you grow into the Christ itself. The beginning of it is the hard part. The understanding that you are the Christ can be made manifested it is the key. Once the key is in the lock and the door is open, you are on the run because the energetic configurations that are required to bring this into form will be brought to you with your intention to acquire it. You know, therefore, the journey to become illuminated and know thyself as the Christ self is a journey that will take time. It doesn't happen overnight, nor does it happen just because you've been reading spiritual books or focused on books that will help you raise your consciousness. The key component in this journey is knowing that you are Christ made manifested. You carry the Christ vibration within you. When you set your intention to align with your higher self, you set things in motion. You recalibrate the process to align yourself with the higher self. When you understand this, you evolve, right? The key is in the lock and the door is open and you are on the run. Once you've said yes to this journey, you can't go back. You can't unknow what you know. You can't unsee what you've seen. You've begun to operate at a frequency that the old self, the false self, will not be able to contain. And when you operate at this frequency, 
the right people, places, and circumstances that are in a vibrational match will appear in your life and will continue to guide you. You know, as I was on this journey and I was starting to awaken and shift and raise my consciousness, I can feel my body pulling me away from the things that I used to do, the old patterns, the old beliefs, the old ways of reacting, the old limited beliefs that I had, the old patterns that weren't serving me. And what I noticed is these things that before perhaps I had contemplating changing, they were easily changed because at my core, at my subconscious, at a soul and spiritual level, my vibration was one in such that I couldn't even fathom going back to some of these old patterns. The change happened from my core. It happened from within. And then this, this really speaks to the fact that you don't change your world by manipulating the material world. You change your world from within. You change your vibration. You impress this on your subconscious and it will be expressed in your outside world. And from a vibrational standpoint, old patterns can't contain you because you're constantly moving towards new patterns and healthier and higher vibrational ways of doing things. You know, you are word. You are an aspect of God being brought forth into the light. As you journey, as you access this information, you become Christ in consciousness. When you become Christ in consciousness, you ascend. When you ascend, your vibrational frequency elevates and aligns in new patterns that cannot hold the old. And the old falls away as you rise. When you rise, your landscape changes. You cannot put new wine into old bottles or new patches onto old garments. You cannot take with you into the new consciousness any part of the old man. All your present beliefs fears, limitations are weights that bind you to your present level of consciousness. And when you rise in consciousness, you change the way you look at things. And when you change the way you look at things, the things around you would change. You know, when I started to align with my higher self, I started to change. You start to discern what is right for you and what isn't right for you. You start to really look at the way you've been doing things. You start to recognize what's truly meant for you. You know, I started to re-examine my why where I would spend my time, who I was spending my time with, what I was putting into my body. And I started to release the need of doing things because I've always done them. And I really started to discern what feels right for me intrinsically. You know, I started to examine my material desires and I started following my soul's desire. And the biggest takeaway during this transition is when you try to change things at the surface level, you may come back to it. You may revert back to old patterns. But when you go within and you change your frequency and you change yourself internally and you align with the higher self, the Christ itself, the things that you once did, the old patterns will break away and fall by the wayside. They will move, move from you very easily. Those old patterns can't contain you any further, any longer. And this is the power of going within. You know, if you were to light a balloon, the sandbags that keep you tethered are those things of lower frequency that cannot go for the ride. As you raise your frequency and as you start to elevate like the balloon, those old patterns that want to keep you down will not be able to keep you down any longer. You know, when one is in ascension, one is rising and the tethers are releasing and the past self is being discarded as the new self incarnates in the body that you are in. The new self, the Christ itself, is incarnated in the body that you are in. The old self walks away and does not come back because the old self never truly was there it was an illusion that you were separate from God. You know, as you begin to understand your own ascension, you will begin to understand that those creations that you experience in your reality are manifested are manifested by you. You know, what you experience in your outer world is a direct reflection of what is occurring within you. Hence, what you experience in form is an illusion because it's a projection, a mirror reflection of who you are and what is happening within your life. Therefore, if you carry limited beliefs, doubts, and fears within you, you will experience them in your outer world through people, places, circumstances, right? They will show up in your life to reflect your inner beliefs. So as you experience them in this dimension, you will also learn from them, right? These experiences serve as guides. They're helping you evolve. They're letting you know what you need to work on within so that your outside world is congruent with your higher self and what you want to experience in life. You have believed that you have been separated from Christ. And to the extent that that has been so, you've created a world that exists in separation. 
now that this has been released, the structures that have been created to keep man from God and fear in misalignment are being shaken to the core and the tumbling down of the walls will make a great sound. But it is a sound that brings forth liberation and light. When the wall has obscured the light, no matter how beautiful the wall looks, the wall must be raised. We have been programmed to believe that true power is obtained from things in the material world. You know, from a young age, we've been taught to believe that power comes from new job, the new house, the new position, you know, the more money that you receive. And this is not our fault. You know, the society in which we live in distributes power according to those external facts. You know, the CEO has more power than the executive and so on and so forth, right? So those with more money have more power than those with less money. And those with more things have more power than those with less things. And what this tells us is in order to obtain power, we must look outside ourselves. And by doing so, we ignore the true self, the higher self, the Christ itself. You know, when one begins to raise their consciousness, then only do they see how these structures have kept us in this low vibrational frequency, denying our true power from who we truly are. But once you begin this journey, and this is the journey, right? Once you begin this journey, you raise your consciousness and awareness and you can't undo what you know. You begin to remove the veil of conditioning. You begin to see things as they are. And when the wall has been obscured by the light, no matter how beautiful the wall must be, the wall must be raised. And this is what's happening for many of us as we're going through this process of awakening. We're raising the walls. We're shedding light on things. You know, we're raising the veil that has obscured us, that has programmed us, and that has conditioned us. And we're starting to see things as they truly are. We're steaming past the social constructs, these old paradigms, and we're really starting to see what truly matters. You know, when you move around aimlessly for so long and the wall has been up, it's almost like you're operating in darkness and you're on autopilot. But once we raise the walls, once we start to shed light on things, we see things as they are, not as they've been told us they are, but as they truly are. And then we can start to discern what is meant for us and what truly isn't meant for us. But now we have choice because we're not moving through life aimlessly. We're moving from a place of high consciousness, high awareness, and a vibrational frequency that is aligned with the Christ itself. We're moving from a place of knowingness. And when you move from a place of knowingness, we're not reaching outside of ourselves for gratitude, validation, and happiness because we know that that truly resonates from within. You know, part of raising your vibrational frequency is decreeing it. You know, as Paul Selig said, when you decree I am word, you summon to your own anchoring as the Christ itself, and you begin to make this manifest in form. The journey of how to become this energy in a way that you can feel, receive, understand, accept, believe, inhabit in truth is what we are intending for you. And here are the steps we take to attune to the frequency of word. I am word through my being. Word, I am word. I am word through my vibration. Word, I am word. I am word through my knowing as myself as word. Word, I am word. You know, these steps incur change through the mind, body, and spirit. And they bring you into the frequency of the creator. Right Through your word, through your vibration, through your knowing, you're aligning with the Christ energy. You're embodying it because you're becoming one with it. You know, the words carry frequency, right? So through your words, you can align with the Christ vibration. Therefore, what you say has power to bring forth what you truly desire. You know, I am word through vibration means I'm moving towards the higher self. And I'm aligning with the Christ frequency, the vibration through the Christ frequency. I am worth through my knowing simply says I am worth through my consciousness. Through my conscious frequency, I align with the creator and their consciousness. You know, when you begin to align with the higher self, your auric field changes and you no longer have room and space for what once was. The doubts, fears, and limited beliefs can no longer accompany you as you begin to ascend and evolve. And once you understand that the truth is within you, you never look to the outside world for validation. Once you understand that you are being guided and you become more grounded and less reactive, once you align with the frequency of the higher self, you no longer connect with the frequency of the lower self. You know, as I stated before, one of the biggest things that I noticed is when I began to align with the higher self, I knew that I was being guided. I started to feel lighter. I started to see the universe is constantly guiding me. You know, I looked at obstacles as detours and nothing more. 
you know, I would no longer grip onto life, but instead I would trust that I was being guided and what was meant for me would show up when it was supposed to and how it was supposed to. And when you operate from that space of love and service and growth, there isn't much that can really derail you. You know, a lot of us want harmony and flow in our lives. And one way to achieve this is to align with the power within and then trust that you're always being guided. Trust that as you raise your vibration, you evolve the right people, right places, the right circumstances. They appear in your life to help you on this journey. An exercise you can do is before you go to bed, align yourself with the higher frequencies. Allow the changes that need to be made in your org field happen. Claim it through your decree. I am word through my word, word I am word. I am word through my vibration, word I am word. I am word through my knowing myself as word, word I am word. I know that I'm constantly being watched over. I am being healed and I'm being guided by those who wish to see my achievements come to fruition and wish to see me grow. You know, you can create a system to remove any negative patterns by decreeing it. I am now making the choice to have this cleared once and for all. And I intend now to release any unconscious behavior that would have me reclaim this pattern that I have stated that I am now free of. Word I am worth through this intention. You know, by stating your retention of releasing any negative patterns that have kept you small, that have kept you limited, that have kept you in limited beliefs, doubts, fears, and limitations. By releasing these, you're saying, I no longer am holding on to these. I want to polarize myself to the positive end of the spectrum. I want to start to experience different intentions. But where I am moving, there's no place for these intentions. As we decree it, as we claim it for ourselves, we embrace it. We raise our vibration so that we don't carry this into our next phase of our lives. You know, this can apply to entrepreneurship. It can apply to work. It can apply to relationships. You know, saying that I am in this place of self-worth and deservingness and my new venture is going to be the right venture for me. And I'm aligning and I'm placing myself in a position that's the best position for me that allows me to bring my skills, my desires, and my skill set together to provide an active service to help those who are also in need of my services so I can evolve and I can help others evolve as well. But it's knowing and decreeing that this is what I want for myself. It's stepping into your, your strength from a place of deservingness and worthiness instead of doubting and having fears, doubts, and limitations and questioning, will I be able to do this? Am I good enough to do this? Most entrepreneurships fail. What if I also fail? What if no one wants to work with me? Am I being an imposter, right? These are limited beliefs that a lot of us carry into new jobs, new positions, entrepreneurships, or something new that we haven't done before. But it's also claiming yourself to be that in which you desire and releasing the negative doubts, fears, and limitations that have held you back. I am now in domain over my thinking. I am now realizing myself fully as the one in control of my thinking. I am now choosing to think only of those thoughts that will bring me in benefit and anchor in a new way of thinking fully into my consciousness. I am worth through this intention Word, I am word. So we're doing a pattern interrupt. We're aligning ourselves with the higher frequency, the feeling of the wish fulfilled and the desire that we have for ourself. We're removing any limited beliefs, negative patterns that have held us back in doubt, fear, hesitation, and indecision. And we're taking on patterns of love, joy, courage, and belief. We're aligning with the feeling of the wish fulfilled. We're writing this out on paper so we can start this pattern interrupt. But we're removing the limited beliefs, doubts, fears, and decisions. And we're setting the intention that we want by putting this on the paper and allowing ourselves to align with that from a frequency perspective. So the process of doing this is first I set the intention. I am word through my intention to believe in my abilities. Then second, you honor and respect the frequency that comes with it. Once I set this intention, I carry a frequency that comes in with it. And then third, I'm in reception of my intention. I'm having trust and faith that the intention I set for myself will come to pass, will come to fruition. That desire I have for myself will also come to be, right? That, but it's a process of setting the intention, believing it to be true, and knowing that it will come. Creating from the feeling of the wish fulfilled, holding that feeling of the wish fulfilled and allowing that to take form into fruition. And we do these things through reprogramming from ourselves from a subconscious belief. We do this through writing things on paper or we do this through 
decreeing it, saying it through our words. When you look at prayer, prayer is a form of setting an intention, right? It's just understanding the difference between begging for something and claiming something to be true. You know, when you're begging for something, it implies lack that you don't have it. I wish I had this state or I wish I had this entrepreneurship or I wish I had these certain things that I don't have implies a lack that you are missing something in your life. But if you claim it to be true and if you align with the vibration and you trust and have faith that my feeling of the wish is fulfilled, so I'm living today present state as if I have that feeling because I trust that by aligning with my higher self and aligning with divine intelligence, I become one with the Christ vibration. And then the people, places, and circumstances that are going to bring me towards my desires will come into my life and bring me towards my desires. And I'll start to experience this in my external world. Once I align with this frequency, People, places, circumstances that are in resonance with that frequency will come into my life and I'll start to see the things that I desire to come true. You know, when you set the intention to vibrate at a higher frequency, your frequency changes and the feeling in your energy field will automatically shift and you'll begin to quiet and set the intention and begin to feel what it feels like to sit in the body as it radiates at a higher frequency all around you and you'll begin to understand what energy feels like. You know, it's about understanding your energy, whether through meditation or sitting alone, you get to understand what energy is yours and what energy is coming from other people. As you understand your energy more, you can find out what environments are conducive to your growth or which environments are maybe energy sucking or there's a lot of conditioning and programming that's happening from the people and strangers and places that you find your energy in. Ultimately, you want to understand your energetic frequency. You want to know when you're in a low vibration and what tends to bring it up. And you want to understand if there are people, places, or circumstances that pull your vibration down because ultimately you want to be in a place where you're moving towards the higher self, the high frequency, the high vibration. The more you pay attention to this, you'll be able to feel that some people or some places have a tendency to pull your energy down. They carry a low frequency. And what they try to do within your environment is almost use your energy to bring themselves up. So again, as you pay attention to your own energy, as you pay attention to the people, places, environments, you'll be able to discern what energy is yours, which energy isn't, and which environments are best suited for you. You know, at the end of this journey, you stand in the light and that which has precluded the light from shining through you has been dismantled and has been released. You know, nobody can really help you align to the Christ frequency but you. You know, this journey, at the end of this journey, you stand in the light, meaning that at the end of this journey, you become enlightened and you raise your frequency to match that of the Christ itself. You know, as you go through this book, it's going to give you the resources and tools to remove the veil of conditioning and programming that have kept you limited and that have prevented you from seeing the light and how in the light shining through you. You know, as you embody this book, you remove the things that have kept you from yourself, that have kept you from your truth. You know, the fears, doubts, and limited beliefs start to become dismantled. And as you release them, you start to stand in yourself as yourself. You start to know yourself, meaning as you embody this book, you remove the things that have kept you from your truth. You know, the fears, doubts, and limited beliefs start to become dismantled and you start to release them. You know, you stand in yourself as yourself meaning you become who you are meant to be, the higher self, the person who leads with love, the person who knows they are being guided and the person who's aligned with the vision of the spirit. You know, this is not a passive experience. You know, this work requires you to do more than just simply to read the pages on the book and claim yourself to be enlightened, but it really requires you to take the steps forward to put things into practice, to understand your vibration, understand your energy, to release the limited beliefs that have kept you small, you know, to, 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 to step into a place of knowingness. And as you step into a place of knowingness, you notice that your experiences will change and they will resemble the Christ itself. There are many people when faced with a miracle in life will dismiss it as untrue. That couldn't have happened, so it didn't happen. And that is what people do in the face of wonder when it means they will have to transform their thought to a new idea of what is possible. You know, this is very, this is the very true, this is the very nature of the problem when it comes to people knowing themselves as the Christ itself or knowing that they can align with the higher self. You know, when you tell people that they have the power to change their outer world, 
by aligning internally with the inner world. They dismiss this because it means that they'll have to transform their thought to this new idea of what is possible, right? Because for so long, they have been conditioned to believe that we have no power to change our circumstances. And when you've been taught to rely on your five senses, you can't believe that anything can exist outside that space. So you start to wonder and ask yourself, you know, can I trust my multi-sensories? Can I believe that anything can exist outside this space that you're familiar with? You know, but you, this is the process. It's about trusting your multi-senses, having the belief that something can exist that you can't see, right? It's about changing your paradigm. And you begin, and when you do begin to change your paradigm, you begin to open up to new possibilities. And when you do this, you start to raise your consciousness. You know, when a five sensory person witnesses a miracle, they'll say that this was a coincidence or this was fluke or, you know, there must be some logical explanation for this. You know, the multisensory person will have an understanding of the event and they'll see it extend beyond the five senses. You know, they will just understand that this is what it is. They will not need an, an additional explanation. You know, part of the journey for us is becoming aligned with the Christ itself, aligning with your higher self elevating your vibration to have faith and believe because if you rely on your five senses alone you will limit yourself but if you trust in the multi-senses you allow yourself to elevate to a place of knowing this this is where true transformation takes place this is where alignment takes place you allow yourself to wonder you allow yourself to believe in something that you can't see and when you operate from that space you having trust and belief that something divine is capable, is possible, and is awaiting you. And once you align with that frequency, because remember, it is a frequency when you step into a place of wonder and knowingness and belief. It's a frequency that you carry. And when you align with that frequency, you pull in things that are aligned to it. As the saying goes, once you understand that engaging in wonder will lift your frequency, you can use it in your to your advantage to change yourself permanently. You know, there's nothing wrong with having a spiritual growth that is a difficult path. And many, many, many people right now are growing rapidly in spirit because what they thought they had is suddenly no longer there, you know, and their trust in the material world has changed. They believe that the job would, would save them or that the car would always be in the garage. And now suddenly they may be living in the car that used to drive them to the job that didn't save them. People are having more and more spiritual experiences and experiences that are waking them to the truth. They're understanding that to put all my effort into the external world and trust that these external structures will bring me happiness is a false way of doing things. And when those structures start to crumble, the structures that we thought would be so permanent and would guarantee our happiness, when they start to shift and crumble, whether they are in people, places, or things, we realize that the truth lies within. Because as long as I'm happy within, even if my outside world shakes and shifts and crumbles, I'm still whole within. But if I put all my energy into the outside world and I believe that to give me happiness, I'll be surprised that the situation that's supposed to grant me happiness, the job that's supposed to guarantee my happiness, the relationship that's supposed to last forever, when they crumble, I won't be so distorted. I won't be so disoriented because I still am relying on myself for inner peace and inner happiness and inner alignment. And this is one way of aligning spiritually. You know, there are two ways that man can intend to grow spiritually. One is through conscious intention and one is through getting bounced around enough that one has to go there out of necessity, right? This is like hitting rock bottom or hitting a bottom if you wish, right? And the spiritual growth can be one where you consciously make a decision to align with the spirit and the higher self, right? Usually this is a smoother transition because it requires less difficulty along the way. And for others like myself, it can be born out of mistakes and difficulties. It can be born out of trauma or crisis, right? And it is due to hardship and difficulty for me, you know, in front of crisis. Neither is better than the other. It's just that you will receive what you need in order to grow and evolve. For me, my growth was through hardship and difficulty, you know, I was forced to see things differently. And this is what put me on my spiritual path and raising my consciousness. You know, as I stated in the example above, if you rely on the material world to get you to the point A or point B, then you'll be surprised when the material world starts to change and what you once deemed certain or concrete is no longer there. You know, many people are growing rapidly in spirit because what they thought that they had 
is no longer there and they have to trust in themselves instead of, instead of trusting in material things. You know, the path to enlightenment and growth is going to provide you with what you need. If it's an awakening that is subtle and can come from reading and understanding and tapping to yourself, then you will receive that. You will receive what you require. If it has to be a little more difficult in a sense where you're going to encounter stumbling blocks, it could be chasing job after job and finding yourself completely unhappy. It could be having low self-worth in relationships and finding that, you know, the relationships that you're depending on that are not treating you well or they're not good relationships if maybe you find your awakening through that. But again, it's about understanding that you will receive what you need in order to, to get the awakening that you require so you can begin to evolve, so you can align with the Christ frequency and, this, and the spirit of Christ. But it's not about judging one person's experience over the other. It's understanding that we are creating our experiences. Therefore, these experiences are very unique and they're meant for us. And if these experiences challenges, difficulties, mistakes help you evolve, then who are you to judge the experience of one person over the other? Because that person is receiving what they require so they can move forward in their evolution, so they can begin aligned with the Christ itself. And when they align with the Christ itself, they begin to see the world for what it is, and they understand where true growth and happiness come from. You know, an understanding is actually a way of knowing and a process of knowing, but it is not knowing. And once you come to knowing on a deeper level, the process of understanding is changed. You know, you may actually find that you move forward. What you thought you thought, what you think you think, and what you believe you understood will be changed because you will know. You know, understanding is the bridge that takes place from where you are to this place of knowing. You know, understanding allows you to shed your old skin. It's through the process of understanding that you begin to remove the limited beliefs and you shed this old skin that you have. You know, when you are living in your understanding, you're paying attention to the signs, the symbols, the synchronicities that are coming towards you, right? You're not in this place of knowing, but you're yearning to understand. You're seeing the signs and symbols and synchronicities, and you're trusting and believing to follow these things as they come to you. You know, as a result, you vibrate at a certain frequency. And when you begin to vibrate at this frequency, you start to draw in the right people, places, and circumstances towards you that help increase your understanding and move you towards this place of knowingness. You know, it's in understanding that you see the conditioning. You see the veil of programming. You see the false self. And you begin to understand how it feels and how it looks like to be in your low frequency. You see the under effects of remaining in your low frequency. And you understand that. True power, true authentic power is not obtained from the outer world, but you begin to understand that true authentic power is what lies within. And as you align to this frequency of the higher self, you align to the frequency of the Christ self. And as you align to the frequency of the Christ self, you start to evolve and grow and you shed the layers that have been holding you back for so long. This is the understanding. This is the bridge that understanding provides. It moves you along from lower frequency to a higher frequency, from a place of disempowerment to a place of empowerment. You know, and this is the journey, right? We're moving to a place of, of a higher emotional frequency, a place of love and joy. You know, as Paul Selig states, you know, true love is not a condition. It is a frequency that is emitted that transforms that which you encounter. And it is free. It is not dictated as much as it ex is expressed. You know, and when you are transmitting at a higher frequency, your energy field becomes a tuning fork that pulls things in towards you. You know, therefore, when we look at true love, we have to understand that true love has no boundaries. You know, true love is not a choice, but it's an expression, right? To be in love is to be in the expression of love and not the construct of love, meaning true love lasts beyond falling in love. Like true love extends to the Christ frequency. So when you understand that the Christ frequency is love and you are aligned to the Christ frequency, then you understand, okay, I am in this expression of love. It's not a choice like now I love someone and now I don't, now I've fallen in love. But it's something that you embody and something that manifests through you, you know, it, it resonates in you. It's constantly there, right? This is, as the Kabbalion says, you know, the all is mind and the universe is mental. We are all created in the image of the creator. Therefore, 
we are all one, you know, to love my neighbor is to love myself. It's not a matter of choice. It extends beyond choice. And when we understand this, it enables you to see that everyone is equal, regardless what they do, regardless of the choices that they've made, regardless of what they've done to you, we're all equal. And everyone has the capacity to embody love. And when you embody love, when you embrace love, you shift your frequency, you shift your frequency to one that's closer to the Christ vibration. And this is how we experience growth. We see beyond the constructs that separate us. We see beyond the constructs that separates me from my neighbor. And I see that all is connected, all is one. And through love, through emanating through love, I begin to grow and evolve. You know, when we raise our frequency, we remove the obstacles that have kept us small for so long. You know, a boulder is an obstruction in your consciousness. It's a false belief. And what it does is it limits you. You know, what we do now is we take it for granted and we assume that it must always be there because you misinterpret and you believe that it must always be you, but that's not the case. You know, what you create is based on what you believe. So what you believe is what you experience in your life. So if you believe that life should be difficult and difficulty is your boulder, then you will experience difficulty in your life. If you believe that entrepreneurship will require a lot of hard work, stress, and sacrifice, then you will manifest this in your life because these are the boulders in your life that you believe and they're manifesting into form. You know, if you think that everything must be hard and everything must take years and life is going to be difficult and it's going to have constant problems, then you will create a life that has difficulty that has problems and that will be stressful. It's about understanding that you create these boulders. So at the same fashion, you have the capacity to clear these boulders out of your life. We were aligned to the higher frequencies by removing the old patterns. It's by bringing things to light that align with the Christ vibration. And we can do this through our words. We can do this through what we decree. When I say I am word through my body, I am word means I'm lining my body to the frequency of word. And when I say I am word through my vibration, that means I'm aligning my auric field to the frequency that's aligned to the higher consciousness that's connected to word. You know, when I say I am word through knowing myself as word, it means I'm replacing the fears, limited beliefs, doubts, and indecisions the way I once knew myself with the higher self, the one that's filled with love and joy and courage and the vibration of the knowingness of the higher self. And when I anchor into this, I change my energy and I change my frequency and I pull in the feeling of the Christ vibration. And that's the place that I want to start to create from. You know, the process of aligning to the Christ self, the higher self, is going to require change. And change can be uncomfortable at times, but change means that you're moving towards something new and something that's evolutionary. Change is a departure from what's familiar. Therefore, sometimes change can feel uncomfortable. But you're adopting new patterns and you're letting go of old patterns that don't serve you. You know, and that's what we must understand. True change requires the unclogging and the unblocking of old patterns that were keeping you small. It's about a cleansing that takes place, but we need to get to the root of the problem. And that's why change can feel so jarring at times. But as we take the time to go in and we make the changes that are necessary, we start to recognize that what we were holding on to actually does not serve us. And what we're moving towards and gravitating towards is our new way of being, is aligning with the higher self. You know, when you are in the uncomfortability of change, you will recognize that you are doing things that no longer serve you. And when you align with the new way of doing it, you shift out of the old and into the new. And this is the process of moving your frequency. You know, it's really about understanding that change is allowing you to shift and evolve. Change is a departure from the old self and the old patterns and the old way of doing things. And it's about adopting a new way of doing things. And as we let go of the old patterns, we release the limited self, the small self, the disempowered self, and we align with the higher self, the empowered self. And when we do that, we begin to evolve. We change our frequency. We align with the higher vibration and we move closer to the Christ itself. Then on this experience, we're going to experience trials or tests for that matter, ways that we're going to want to revert back to our old self and our old way of being.
You know, you're going to have these experiences where you're curious of whether or not you should go back to old patterns, old friends, old things that pulled you away from your higher self, old beliefs that kept you small and stagnant. The trials that have come up in your life have been your teachers. And when they require, they provide benefit to your life. They keep you in alignment to your higher goals, which you may not understand at the time, but this is what they're doing. You know, when it comes to trials, they have the power to transform your life and they do so in a positive way. And once you do this, you release some of the fear that was holding you back. You know, the second thing is you remain in your power during the process of a trial. You know, you stay within the highest self. You don't avert or shift back to the low frequencies, but you trust that by staying in the high frequency, I'm going to align with my true desires and I'm going to experience life the way I want to experience it. And that in itself is shifting your frequency. Again, it's the knowingness that this trial is aligning me with my true self. So I'm not going to revert back to old patterns. I'm going to continue to stay the course because I have trust and belief that by continuing to do what I'm doing, I'm moving towards the frequency of the Christ itself, the higher self. And ultimately, as we move towards the Christ itself and we're increasing our vibration, we want to understand that love is the expression that will help us get there. You know, when you love someone in the real way, you are incarnating as love. And the love bypasses judgment, criticism, and there can be no fear in love. You know, as you manifest as love, your frequency begins to transform and you vibrate at the frequency of love. And this extends beyond the feeling of, of love. And it's more about the essence of love, right? It's not about putting a cap on your love, but rather it's understanding that the Christ frequency is one of love. And when you're in alignment with that, you embody love, you vibrate at love, and you constantly pull in things towards you, people, places, and experiences that are going to align with that frequency. And this is the process of evolving. This is how we align with the Christ frequency. As we continue to do these things, we continue to put them into practice. We not only evolve, but we can transform our lives and the lives of people around us. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed today's session. Feel free to comment, like, or leave a message. Thank you.